الله أكبر الله أكبر Today we are uh, blessed with a special guest, my colleague, Sheikh Muzammil Hafizahullah Ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, good, alhamdulillah. First, Jazakallah khairan for uh, making time in your busy schedule to be here uh, for this podcast. Barakallah fikum. Jazakallah khairan for having me. Barakallah. Sheikh, I want to just uh, kickstart this podcast to ask you a couple of questions, of course. You come from America, <laughs> okay. and now you've moved to the UK. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been here for? Well, now I'm coming up on my... Yeah, uh, beginning of my third year actually. Allah Two full Allah. years here. Yes. MashaAllah. Allah. Okay, alhamdulillah. And how many Ramadans have you spent uh, here in the UK? Two. Two Ramadans now. Two Ramadans. MashaAllah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you a, a question. Okay. okay. Uh, for those that are watching from America, they may, um, might find this a, a controversial question. <laughs> okay. Uh, for you, what do you think, what do you prefer? Where do you prefer Ramadan? In America or the UK? Honestly, that's a tough question because there are so many aspects to Ramadan, right? There's the aspect of family and being here, uh, I personally am distant from my family. So you miss that uh, component of Ramadan. Uh, and I'm sure you have family in Newcastle and you were with us here last year as well. So you must have felt a bit of that as well. Yeah. There's something about being together with family that really, uh, you know, uh, accentuates the Ramadan experience. Um, and mom's food, <laughs> you know, alhamdulillah, yeah. uh, Allah bless our mothers. I mean, uh, so there's that component where wherever you're with your family, it's really good. As far as the communities are concerned, then it really depends on the community, right? Yeah. Uh, the community experience can be varied depending on the people that show up, depending on, you know, if you have a lot of uh, the elderly people, maybe you might not be able to relate to them as much. If you have a lot of youth, maybe that brings about more responsibilities. You know, you, you want your friends around, all of these sorts of things. Uh, Alhamdulillah, obviously uh, ELM as a community that we have here, it's a blessed community. I remember when I came here the first time, I went around to a bunch of masajids because uh, in London, one of the special things about London is, especially in Ramadan, you see this, there's qurra, reciters that come from yeah. all across the world and they all come and, and they spend time and, and they spend the Ramadan here. And of course, you want to go and you want to jump and you know you want to experience all of this. So I went to a bunch of different uh, masajid and alhamdulillah, the uh, uh, the qurra that we had here, the program that we had set up here the first year, I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Uh, alhamdulillah, and I really was able to enjoy Ramadan uh, to the fullest. Uh, alhamdulillah, you have some communities like that in uh, in the U.S. as well. So I know it's a controversial <laughs> question. I hope my my response has not been as controversial. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, your Ramadan experience is directly uh, a reflection of how involved you are uh, in Ramadan and in your community. So whether you're here or you're somewhere else. Um, uh, directly being involved in the masjid with the community, mm -hmm. with the brothers and sisters that are there, uh, will reflect mm -hmm. how great your Ramadan is. Mashallah. Yeah. Now, on the back of what you mentioned, you mentioned that Mashallah, you uh, you spent uh, th uh, two Ramadans here, and you, you've you've had the opportunity to explore different masajid in London, outside of London, during Ramadan. Yeah. And now we're going to make it a bit more of a controversial okay. question. Um, in your experience, um, where does ELM stand out <laughs> from these masajid? Alhamdulillah, you know, ELM, I mean, uh, we're aware of social media, if not active on it. I think uh, whenever it comes to Ramadan, ELM, uh, usually it's recitations, they go viral. Uh, there is, and that's just one component, all the programs. We have such a great iftar uh, that, happen with th that happens with thousands of people that are here. Uh, we, alhamdulillah, are able to accommodate uh, a lot of different people. One of the things that you actually find, I remember, so when I came here the first year, I went to like over 20 different masajid and I like listed all of them. These are the major important masajid. These are the ones with all the qurra that are coming. These are the ones that, you know, you have to visit. Um, and I listed it all and ELM was definitely at the top. Uh, you know, uh, alhamdulillah, we're blessed in numerous ways. One of those, I mean, very simply, you know, you have uh, so many masajid and Allah, you know, bless them to expand and to grow more. So many masajid, even here in London, uh, unfortunately, you know, they get packed out half an hour before the taraweeh even starts and there's no space anymore. Mm. Then you wait for the eight raka crowd to go yeah, so the yeah. 20 raka crowd can yeah. <laughs> come in and they can uh, join for the rest of them. <coughs> Uh, but alhamdulillah, we're able to accommodate uh, a lot uh, of, uh, uh, I mean, inshallah, hopefully the entire community here, yeah. especially now uh, we have the expansion that's going on as well, uh, which which I hope everybody inshallah gets you know involved with and, and tries to help out on. 
Um, but uh, that's one uh, aspect. And then, alhamdulillah, uh, there's just uh, the environment. Uh, there are the liveliness you yeah. know, that you find outside of ELM. It's, uh, sometimes it gets out of control. But, but it's, a good, uh, it's a good vibe. It's, still, it? yeah. it's a good vibe. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of uh, restaurants nearby yeah. that cater and change themselves to the yeah. Ramadan schedule. So it's a blessing being here. I tell everybody ELM and not even like... There's microcosms within one another. ELM is like uh, this bubble, this safe space for anybody who wants to experience like the f- like uh, Ramadan on adrenaline, uh, adrenaline if they want that. <laughs> and they want to yeah. see what the most you can get out of Ramadan is probably anywhere in at least the Western world. Yeah. Uh, and even compared to some places in the Muslim world where there's not that much of yeah. a liveliness uh, yeah. that, that I've seen. No, this is a it's a real it's a little oasis in the middle of the desert. Yeah, you know, subhanAllah, uh, you're mentioning that, uh, of course, I, I've been in London for uh, just over a year now as well. And, you know, it, as you mentioned, the experience in Ramadan here, especially in ELM, is different. Um, they describe ELM as, or they still describe ELM as the haram of UK, right? <laughs> Which is uh, because of the environment. And uh, if I'm being honest, what I've seen is when you come near ELM, you feel like you're in a Muslim country. It's like yeah, a yeah. small country in of itself, yeah. and especially in Ramadan. Of course, course you have your uh, positives and negatives that will happen uh, you know uh, wherever you go but yeah subhanallah it is a different kind of vibe i mean for myself as well last year was the first year that i led mm-hmm. here it was a different experience a uh, different kind of pressure uh, mm-hmm. but it was it, it was a beautiful experience now alhamdulillah you know in ramadan we have so many different kind of community events that's mm-hmm. taking place um and we had the uh, the iftar we have been doing that for many years now and this is growing and growing. I think last year we had we were accommodating for more than a thousand people. Subhanallah. Yeah, Subhanallah. And um, yeah, I want to sh- uh, ask you to share some experiences on uh, you know the community iftar that takes place here. Um, what's your thoughts on it? And um, okay, how's the food even you know <laughs> that's provided in ELM? No, Alhamdulillah. Uh, at least uh, uh, you know in my experience and. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'd call myself a real foodie, <laughs> but I do also <laughs> like to go around yeah. and try out uh, some of the restaurants. And uh, no, Alhamdulillah, it's it's a blessing. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a blessing. We have uh, good food. We have a good community. We have a good environment that happens during the community of Tars when everybody gets together. You see all of these different, you know, brothers hanging out in groups. And one of the things that's really fascinating, Alhamdulillah, is we do have, uh, 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 you know, obviously, I think predominantly this is a, a Bengali community, yeah. but especially you see this during Ramadan, it's so diverse. Is, you have is, people yeah. that are coming from, you know, just so many different backgrounds and they're meeting and they're like interacting with one another yeah. and they're sharing their experiences. We have many new Muslims that are yeah. here. We have many uh, brothers and sisters from different communities. We have a lot of the Somali uh, brothers that uh, show up as well. Alhamdulillah. And all of that adds to the richness of uh, the community community of thought and the experience that we have uh, here it's it's uh, genuinely a, a yeah. big blessing from Allah yeah you mentioned that subhanallah you know it, I, I've seen and met people that have come travel from outside of London yeah. during Ramadan just to pray yeah. in yeah. Uh, in in ELM I mean it is alhamdulillah we're, we're blessed to be in such a community and may Allah ta'ala protect uh, this Amen. community Amen. I mean um, just I wanted to mention something of course now alhamdulillah we've also got an influx of uh, new Muslims coming in yeah. and we have shahadas Nearly on, a, on a daily basis, subhanAllah. Mm-hmm. Just before mm-hmm. we were recording this, we had yeah, a sister yeah. come in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, trying to take the shahada, and inshallah, she or will two. be together. We had a brother, the Korean uh, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah just inshallah. before salah, subhanAllah. Yeah. And yeah. this is something that is beautiful about uh, ELM. I was mentioning that uh, before I joined ELM, actually, whilst I was in Newcastle as an imam for a year uh, or two, uh, subhanAllah, I didn't even take one shahada like not even one brother or sister came in to take the shahada because of course small community but coming here is a different kind of experience i've been here for over a year and myself experienced more than 85 shahadas you know mm-hmm. it's, it's something beautiful now talking about this of course uh, talking about unity etc community spirit in ramadan what advice would you give uh, for new Muslims or uh, yeah. how can we accommodate for them better in the month of Ramadan? You know, it's, it's, a, great, uh, it's a great thing that you mentioned the word shahada. Mm. Because uh, when Allah Azza wa Jal, He speaks about Ramadan in the Quran and He speaks about fasting in, in this month, uh, He says what? فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ So He uses the word of witnessing. Yeah. And it's a very uh, potent, powerful word. Mm. Because it does, doesn't does refer to when the month of Ramadan comes along. Yeah. It's not just another month in the life of a believer, in the life of a Muslim. Mm. It really mm. is like you are distracted for the rest of the year. You stray away from Allah. You stray away yes. from guidance. You stray away from 
doing those things that are, you know, your responsibilities as a Muslim. And the month of Ramadan comes, and along with that, the devils are locked yeah. up, and your, you know, chance. It's yeah. like you're giving shahada all over again. It's so like you amazing. are coming into Islam all over again. It's new. like you're coming into the community all over again. A new self. So, <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. like you're reinventing yourself yeah. one more time. Allah has given you one more opportunity. Yeah. And as much as it's, uh, you know, this, you know, I'm sure uh, a lot of the brothers and sisters that come through the door and they give their shahada. You know, when Ramadan comes along, for a lot of even just like regular Muslims, it's like you're coming through for the first time yeah, and is. you're ready to, you know, and like now change and, and, and improve yourself. So it's like, you know, it's a lesser form of a shahada as well. Yeah. And, um, and this is very, this is key. This is very important. So one of the things that we advise whenever brothers and sisters, they come and they give the shahada, you know, they, they come from different backgrounds. They have difficult family issues. Maybe they are, you know, being cut off. Yeah. They, some of them, they struggle. And alhamdulillah, some of them, they have good, you know, family relationships. But still, there's a disconnect now, yeah. right? Their holidays uh, as a Christian, as a uh, Jewish person, yeah. as a Hindu uh, it's person, yeah. it's, it's different, right? Yeah. And now when they see them celebrating those holidays and they don't partake in it themselves, you know, it can feel like, you know, you're kind of lost. You yeah. do, you, you know, you're not, you're not part of that yeah. community. You feel alienated in that community that you come from. And then now, it when you're in this new community, if you're not involved, that, that alienation is doubled, yeah, right? So there's a reason that every religion, every race, Allah created, you know, uh, this idea of celebration as something that uh, human beings, it's tied to their fitrah. Yeah. And then he legislated a way for it to be done yeah. properly within the sharia that we have. So we advise all the brothers and sisters that come through a couple important things. One, you know, you're now a Muslim. You have a new family. And uh, it's a it's a it's a two way street. It's our responsibility as uh, people who are already Muslims from before to show that love and reception and care to those that come in. But it's also a responsibility for them to you know yes even if you're introverted a little bit yeah. you know just go out of your comfort uh, zone a little bit get to meet people get to build those relationships because they really help you in your journey yeah. of Islam. And they really help you in practicing the deen and building an identity that allows your, uh, you know, Islam to be permanent and, and strong and to be able to convey that to the next generation, your uh, children and their children. So, the, the, you know, this is key, very important. You know, Ramadan is a great opportunity where people come from all sorts of backgrounds yeah. together. They're all in the masjid. You'll find those people that, you know, you interact with and you find uh, uh, camaraderie with, you're close to. And, uh, and you build those relationships that last even outside of the yeah. month of Ramadan. Mashallah. Mashallah. Everybody I know, all of the uh, uh, people who have come to Islam, I mean, uh, uh, Ramadan is one of their favorite uh, seasons. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yes. Well, it, it's not just like, you know, we say Eid is a celebration, right? Yeah. Ramadan, itself is, yeah. Ramadan is 30 yeah. days of I'm celebration yeah. each and every single night if we, uh, if we do it properly. Yeah. So it's, it's a great thing to uh, take advantage of. That's one thing. The other thing is obviously, and we should never forget this, the uh, month of Ramadan, Allah Azza wa Jal, He doesn't start the first, you know, Man Shahid Aminkum, mm -hmm. that's from the middle yeah. of the ayah. Yeah, yeah. The first part of the ayah is Shahr Ramadan, Alladhi Yunzila Fihil Quran, yeah. right? This is the month of the Quran, and the Quran is your guidance. Yeah. It is the criterion between uh, truth and falsehood. Yeah. It is, it's very important for us, and especially people who are, you know, new to their faith, whether it's they've come to Islam yeah. or they're trying to find their faith, uh, people who were born Muslims but rediscovering it. It's very important to use this time, to utilize it to build a relationship with the Quran. Quran, because that relationship with the Quran, even in the absence of other people, is what's going to keep your faith and your identity as a Muslim strong yeah. and, and carry you through the rest of the year. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, those are the two things I would say. Build a relationship with the Quran, first and foremost. And there's a lot of avenues of doing yeah. that. Alhamdulillah, most of our programs and across Masajid across the UK are focused yeah. on just, uh, you know, giving lectures and talks yeah. that speak about the Quran. So everyone needs to utilize that time properly. And the second thing is, you know, interact with community members and build those relationships. Jazakallah yeah. khairan for that. Um, okay. I have a quick question. So now, of course, um, uh, we, we always have many shahadas coming in, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we talked about community spirit, etc. Um, of course, in the month of Ramadan, it's a time... A time of unity we see it in the iftars we see it in the tarawi prayers we have a congregation of six seven thousand people coming in and you really feel that uh ukhuwa, that brotherhood and unity and of course we know the ge generic verses in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that hold on to the rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now talking about holding on to the rope of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and unity community spirit all of that comes into one and 
how can we implement that in the month of Ramadan? This yeah. concept of unity, and not just in the month of Ramadan, generally with so much uh, division going on in the Ummah, etc. What would your advice be on in terms of unity? Right. Look, I, I think um, this uh, this can be a whole talk in and of yeah, itself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But one thing I do uh, say is وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Many of the ulama, many of the mufassirin, when they give uh, the you know explanation of this حَبْلِ اللَّهِ You know, some of them, they describe this as the Book of Allah exactly, itself, yeah, yeah. right? And Ramadan is the, the month, month of the Book of Allah. Yeah, so our relationship with Allah, that, that unity... Uh, unity is is a beautiful thing. Uh, that unity, however, you know, can be on a host of issues. You can have your favorite. I mean, I know all Liverpool fans today are like super united with one another because they're losing their their coach. I guess I don't know much about football, but you know, you can build your. You have to call it soccer. Soccer, yes. Uh, well, yeah, soccer. You guys gave the name soccer, by the way. I love like British people attack uh, Americans for saying soccer. The soccer, the term comes from the British. Oh wow! Well. But uh, anyways, the so you can build your unity on a host of different things, right? And the same places where you build unity, you also build uh, conflict, oh, right? Yeah. So Liverpool fans will hate Man United fans. They'll hate, like, yeah. you know, Chelsea fans. Like, all of these back and forth sort of things. As Muslims, we have to understand very precisely what it is that we unite upon and what it is that becomes the source of disunity and conflict and so on. Because if we're united on things that are, you know, uh, essential to our faith, then everything else will be able to, Secretary, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. deal with, uh, you know, in 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 its own uh, right. But oftentimes, because we don't have that relationship with the Quran, because we don't have that relationship with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because we don't have, you know, uh, uh, these very important facets of what our identity should be, do other things become a problem, mm -hmm. right? So our cultural practice of Islam. Because we're not connected strongly to the to the to the roots of our faith, yeah. that cultural practice might become the source of division with other cultures who might even be Muslim themselves, right? Yeah. But just because of our behavior and their behavior, it's different. Then we want to divide. When this is completely wrong, and you'll see that any community that is strongly attached to the Quran, strongly attached to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, oftentimes, especially in a place like this, they're diverse communities mm. because people come together and they unite on values that are more important than just you know yeah. my skin color or my yeah, language yeah, yeah. or you know if i prefer curry or if i prefer uh you know <laughs> burger and chips, <laughs> burger, and chips. Uh, burger and chips can be a uniting factor it yeah. oftentimes is i mean i've gone to so many communities in ramadan where the iftar of the masjid is your burger and chips and subhanallah these are brothers and sisters who are not you know originally uh british or they're not yeah. you know uh, from a background of burger and chips, but it, it's the food that brings yeah. people together. And we know the uh, Sahaba عليهم, that they would spend, you know, uh, after post Ramadan, they'll spend six months just asking Allah for uh, acceptance of what they've done. And then they'll spend the next six months preparing for Ramadan, asking Allah Ta'ala uh, to uh, get them to reach the month of Ramadan. What advice, final advice, would you uh, like to yeah. give to the audience, inshallah, uh, for preparing for Ramadan? Uh, again, I go back to some of the statements of the Salaf where they said that. Uh, the month of Rajab is the month of planting the seeds. Mm -hmm. The month of Sha'ban is for watering yeah. the plant. And then Ramadan comes along and you harvest the fruits mm -hmm. uh, of your hard labor. Uh, you know, a lot of people, um, they have this uh, plan mm -hmm. that they're going to go into the month of Ramadan. Yeah. And as soon as the month of Ramadan starts, they're going to hit the ground running. Yeah. And khalas, they're going to be different people. Yeah. But the truth is that uh, Ramadan is not a hundred meter dash. You're not, it's not, you know, there and over in yeah. two days. Two days people can maintain, yeah. you know, going 100%. Yeah. Three days people can maintain it. Yeah. Anything beyond a week, you know, a week and a half, people will burn out, yeah. right? No matter how strong you are, people will generally burn out. Yeah. Even if you are somebody who recites like 10 pages on the first day <laughs> or 10 juz on the first, uh, ajza on the first day, you're not necessarily going to be doing that at the end. Illa mashallah. Allah, you know, has uh, uh, his exceptions and, and the friends of Allah are different. Uh, but generally as human beings, you know, we forget that the month of Ramadan is a month of, it's a, Ram uh, it's a marathon, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a marathon. And the way that you prepare for a marathon is that you, uh, uh, you know, start exercising, before. you start running, you start sweating yeah. a little bit before, so that when it comes along, you're able to pace yourself throughout the entire month, 
And once you've done that, once you've paced yourself throughout the entire month, what you've achieved then is a lot more than if you had just okay. burned yourself yeah, out exactly. in the first yeah. couple of yeah. days and, and that was it and nothing more than that. Yeah. There's two things the Prophet Sallallahu so, so. he said, which uh, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll re- repeat right now. The first of those is that the Prophet Sallallahu he said that أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ That the most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are consistent even if they are uh, uh, not as great, uh, the, even if they are few. Um, what this means, you know, when you really look into it, is not that you know these deeds are few uh, as an aggregate. Mm. These deeds are few in and of themselves. Yeah. But when they are consistent, these That's are the deeds that perfect. actually end up being a lot. Yeah. And I give the example of somebody in a gym, right? If you go and you work out like two hours a day, and you burn yourself out, and you only go to the gym for uh, you know two days a week because you're burned out, yeah. you've gone four hours. Yeah. Now compare that to a person who goes one hour a day. Even if he goes for you know yeah. four days a week because his body isn't that stressed, that's two extra hours in mm-hmm. one week. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a mu- much of a difference, mm. but now compare that in one year, right? Like that's about a, a two hours, 52 weeks, 104 hours this person has spent more in the gym, yeah. right? This is, I think, Firaz Zahabi is an MMA guy. <laughs> he calls this you know, the flow state, and, like, and he explains this really well. But just as much as it applies you know, physically, this applies to our uh, spirituality. Yeah. When you have balance, when you have consistency, then this adds up a lot more at the end of the day. And that end of the day is what's important, so, right? Yeah. Why? Because the second thing the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِخَوَاتِمِهَا yeah, Actions are by how they end, end. right? Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure we end, you know, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَى Like they, uh, uh, the people when they come to Eid, the, why are they doing takbir of Allah? If they've been la- like s- lazy and yeah. sleeping in bed and not really doing anything, just watching TV or Netflix, what is there to celebrate and do takbir of mm-hmm. at the end of the month of Ramadan? We celebrate that end of month of Ramadan, uh, the end of that month because of how much closer we've gotten to yeah. Allah. So that last moment, that's what we're looking for, mm-hmm. right? And we want to make sure we are at the strongest when the month of Ramadan ends, yeah. because then we'll be able to carry that with us for the, you know uh, some part of that for the rest of the year. And that can only happen when we're ready to run that marathon. Mm. They say that there's, you know, and if you go in like in an actual marathon, mm. there's a lot of people at the beginning, a lot of people at the end, and they're known as the audience. Mm. But the people that are actually running, far less, yeah. far less, right? <laughs> but we want to be of those people that are actually participating in Ramadan not and not just, just an audience to the month of Ramadan. Yeah. And we do that by starting now. Yeah. We, we do, uh, you know, a fasting and reading Quran and building a habit so that when the month of Ramadan comes, we're, our, our heart is already beating and we're already ready for this long marathon. Yeah, I want to mention a, a quote that I actually heard from uh, our, our main Imam, Sheikh Abdul Qayyum. He mentioned something which was beautiful when he, when he described getting prepared for the month of Ramadan. He described it uh, as, a, as a manual car, right? right? He was saying that <laughs> if you start with fifth gear, what happens is you stall straight away, right? <laughs> yes. if, even if you go into third wow. gear, it's straight away, you'll stall. Mashallah. You go from first, second, third, yeah. fourth, yeah. and that's exactly what it that's is. That's amazing. Um, yeah. so, I think that, that's true. We need yes. to really prepare ourselves and uh, take this as a marathon. And I, I think every single one of us as individuals, we need to look at ourselves and how we can prepare Inshallah. ourselves. And yeah, Jazakallah khairan for, uh, yeah, for all, all that information and all that knowledge that you've shared. May Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from Allah. you. And inshallah, Allah. Allah. we hope that inshallah we can host you more uh, for, 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 for this ELM podcast that we have started. And Jazakallah khairan for everyone for listening. And hopefully we will see everyone soon, inshallah. Subhanakallah. Wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khair.